Today I'm going to be showing you how to create your thumbnails for Teachers Pay Teachers. For me particularly, I am going to be doing a listing where I have worksheets and I'm going to be doing the thumbnails for the worksheets. So the first step to, that I take is I export my worksheets as a PNG. So within my design, I will go to download PNG and then I will click download and this will download everything in a zipped file. Now you can definitely take pictures of your products. It's totally up to you. But for me personally, I don't want to spend the money on printing my stuff and then taking pictures. So this is the way I create my listings for free. So then what I will do is I will go over to home and I will create a custom size and I like to do something that is square so I'll do 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. Now this is what I am doing for myself. I don't know if this is the right way to do it but as a graphic designer this is the way I always go about doing it. So in this case we're going to be doing pixels because pixels is used when your content is digital whereas inches is used if you're printing it. So I will create a new design and I'll create a couple pages. Now the first page, I always do my background in a light gray color. And then I want this lighter, so I'll just click on it and then I will move it up more towards the white until I get a color I like. And I kind of like that color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload my files. And I have all my files here. I'm just going to highlight everything and I'm going to drag and drop them into Canva. Now for my main page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start dropping in my worksheets once they load up. And as you can see, they have the blue bar and they are loading. And what I will do is I will add them all in there and then I will highlight everything and then I will hold my mouse down and then I will shrink it so that it is all the same size because you will want consistency within your design. That is what makes everything look good is having consistent colors and consist consistent sizing and spacing within your design. And then what I will do is I will just start organizing them within my design. So I kind of look overall at the colors and place them in a way that looks good. So I will do pink, yellow, and these two are kind of the same colors, so I will do them opposite so that it kind of anchors them within my design. And then I'm going to take this, and I need to shrink it down a little bit more in order to fit my text at the bottom. And you can always rearrange this however you want. If you wanted to do three, I think I just like the way four looks. And I will center that within my design. And then what I will do is I will go over to my elements. I will do a square and then I will put that at the bottom and then I will go in and I will grab my color from the worksheet, something that looks good and that will pop. So here's the orange, I think that looks nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add text. And I will add a heading and what I want is I want a really heavy blocky font. Um, it's typically in graphic design referred to as a fat face and um, it has its origins in the Industrial Revolution where they would use these big fat fonts so that you can see it far away for the factories. So what I will do is I will increase the size of this and I will switch it to all caps to further add that sense of being able to see it from a distance and having consistency and weight towards the bottom of the composition. So I'm going to put back school worksheets 
and I will probably do that, make it larger, and then I will put it right there so it's centered. And then I will change the color of my text to either, that's what gray looks like, but I think I might do it in white to create more contrast. And then I'm liking the way that looks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to edit image and I am using the older version of Canva. I switched between the old one and the new one. You can, you know, click to upgrade and then you can click to downgrade. But I like to use the shadows and I like to add an angled drop shadow. And what that does is that it gives it more depth to the design and it gives it the illusion that it is printed or there's like a stack of them. So that is what I do for my cover image. And then what I will do is I will go in and I will, if I think this, I think this kind of looks a little bit flat and boring. So I will just kind of go in and I will add some erasers or pencils or some kind of little decoration to draw more attention to the listing. Now, there's kind of no right or wrong way to do a listing. I like to put my text at the bottom as opposed to the top for a couple different reasons. For me, visually, I think it helps weigh down the design. And then I also think that a lot of people put their text at the top and I kind of inverted the format of it so that when we're looking at the listing on a page, if there is a lot of listings um, kind of with the same format, mine might stand out more if it is at the bottom. Like the text is at the bottom, the layout's a little bit different. So that's why I go about my design this way. So then I will go ahead and actually what I think I'll do is I'll um, delete these pages out and then I will copy them and I will put, you know, four worksheets. And then I'm going to copy it again. And what I will do is I will blow them up so that they can see them better. Then I will get rid of the bottom ones. I will do the same. And then if you go over to file and you go to view settings, I have the show ruler, rulers and grit guides on. Um, and then you can just kind of drag and drop your rulers to make sure things are the correct size. This looks like it can be just a hair larger. And then what I will do is I will put like endless fun. And then I will duplicate this again. And then I will go back to my uploads and then I will put in the answer keys. Those can be larger. And then I will make sure to add the shadows. And then I will put an answer. and then I'll put included. For the last page, I always put just download, sit back and relax or something similar to that um, so that it is painting teachers a good picture of what they can do to kind of have like a happy ending. I love Donald Miller's uh, building a story brand 
Um, he talks about how you should um, craft a story and how you should have a favorable outcome for your product and how it solves a solution. So all you have to do is just download, sit back and relax. And then I added a video of a person drinking tea because to me that's relaxing. And I do this with all of my designs. And then what I like to do is I like to go back and I like to make sure everything looks good. And yeah, so this is how I make designs. I will go over to share. I will go to download. I will go to PNG. I will click download. And then I will do back to school worksheets and then um, if for some reason these file sizes are too big I will just go to download and I will do a JPEG and then I will um, click whatever images that I need to re-download in a smaller size but normally they all work pretty good. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and please let me know below what do you use to make your listings for TPT. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video. I will see you next time.